Welcome back to the channel. Got a good one for you here today. What we're looking at is the Panzer Arms M4. This is a clone copy of the Benelli M4 um, made in Turkey. It's supposed to, and it brags as being neck and neck with the Benelli M4, but I guess we're gonna have to see about that. But anyway, comes in a beautiful um, wood stock and foregrip. Um, just from examination, from what I can see, the only thing I see is the uh, trigger guard looks to be different. It comes with Picatinny rail, mini Picatinny rail on both sides, and it's also cut on the receiver so you can change the charging handle for you all that uh, shoot left-handed. Now, I haven't fired it yet. We're going to shoot it here in a few minutes. But um, I find myself being concerned about this slot here on the receiver where they cut it um, that looks like an extra spot where dust and debris can get in. So I understand them making it ambi, but um, leaves a lot of real estate in there around that boat for dust to get in. And also from the factory, examining it, it looks like the front sight had been run all the way over to the right hand side. Now this front sight is adjustable, but you guys, when you buy this thing and you take it out the box, I want you to be mindful of that. Check it, make sure it's centered. So when you start on the range, you're not wondering why you got these flyers in your pattern. But otherwise, it appears to be a durable uh, copy of the Benelli M4, which I happen to have right here. Now, when it comes down to the two, Panzer Arms, um, their uh, shotgun may hold up like they claim. And only time will tell. When you get someone that comes out with a new firearm, I like to see the results two to four years out to see if there's any bugs in it. So this thing is so new, I don't know if they can make that claim that it will run with the Benelli, but most people I've talked to said that the parts are interchangeable. Um, one thing with me and Benelli, I've got this thing with brand loyalty. I don't work for them but um, I've been uh, purchasing their products for years. And even if the products run neck and neck, customer service goes a long way as well. So um, I've seen, and I recently dealt with a company, Taurus International, you know, the uh, customer service appears to be in one department, totally separate on another continent from uh, production and quality control. And that makes a difference if you have a little slight hiccup with a product from a company. But we're gonna shoot this Panzer and see how it feels. Uh, I'll compare it to the Benelli and I'll put my comments at the end of this video, very short video. Also, a little housekeeping now while I'm thinking about it. Um, this is a home defense or tactical shotgun. Um, I'm starting to see a lot of things with instructors nowadays on the internet where a lot of people are firing their shotguns like this. This thumb is supposed to be over here. It helps you control that third point of contact that you're having with that weapon on your body. Now, I don't know who started this, but y'all need to stop it because those individuals that's training themselves to shoot with that thumb over there, you're setting yourself up 
for disaster, especially in a tactical situation, you get into a scuffle over your firearm and you don't have your full grip on it, grab it. Put that full grip on it. Settle down in it. If you're going through a door and you get jammed up in the door or someone tries to take it and you got your thumb over here, you're practically handing them the whole upper receiver of your shotgun. So do what you want to do, but if it doesn't work out, I told you because this is the proper way. You know, I see guys shooting bench rest rifles and they're going for maximum accuracy and they're doing that. That's them. That's fine. You know, whatever. But we train like we intend to fight. And when you're walking around the battlefield or in a hot situation or law enforcement all of a sudden, you got your thumb over here. You got all this real estate open where someone can easily take your weapon from you. So be mindful of that. Now that that's out the way, what we want to do is um, let's fire this thing up. See what we got going on. What we had here was the first round out of this new shotgun failed to eject. I fixed that. It is well lubed. I'm not gonna ding them on that because it's the very first shot. So we're gonna run this thing again and see what happens. Uh-oh, it's getting the hang of it. Let's put some more through it. We're gonna run another tube through and see how it survives. Could be the break-in period on that first round that failed to eject. So here we go. Okay, dead trigger. I outran the trigger. Dead trigger again. Failure to feed. There you have it just like I see it. Failure to feed. We've got a number of failures here. This bad boy is going back to Panzer. Now, I was always told you get what you pay for. This is a third of what the Benelli cost. And you see what I'm having problems with. So, Think about it, we'll do this again when it comes back from Panzer if I don't get rid of it. But thank you, and I'm not editing anything. We didn't do, do anything special to it. Well, let's see what my Bedelli says about it. Now I know it's a lot of guys out there probably bought that Panzer and they don't having the problems that we just experienced. I'm not saying that all of them are like that, but that is the one that I purchased and we're gonna have to deal with it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And you guys, 
with this right here, I hope you learned something too. See you soon.